Hi everyone, my name is Tamara, and this is the sixth episode of the Caffeinated Craft Mamas podcast. My podcast where I talk about my knitting and crocheting life in Southwest Missouri, where I live with my partner Richard, our three kids, and our dog. Welcome back to any previous viewers and hello to any new viewers. If you like what you see here today, I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and join our community. I would love to have you along for the ride. How have you all been? It's been two weeks and it's allergy season and it's just been a lot. We had spring break. Richard surprised me with some extra time off work, which is why the podcast is late. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And it's good to be back to a normal schedule. So today I'm drinking a Big Lowe's vanilla chai. I needed a pick-me-up today and this seemed to fit the bill. Oh, yum, yum. If you would like to follow me on social media, I am most active on Instagram. You can follow me there at caffeinated underscore craft underscore mama. I post there a couple of times a week, so if you like what you see here, come over and join us over there. I did hit 500 subscribers, so thank you for everybody who came and gave me a follow. Once we hit 50 here, we'll be doing a giveaway, and I've got some fun stuff planned for that. So let's get started. As you all may notice, I'm wearing a finished object. I finished my Chasing Blizzard shawl. Let me get it off here. This pattern is by Katie at KVG Woolworks. I made some modifications to the pattern, which we'll talk about in a minute. This is knit out of Cascade Heritage in Black and Bad Wolf Girl Studios in Pin Up Zombie. And there it is in all its glory. I absolutely love this shawl. It was an entry that I was making into the Great Green Cow, which ends on March 31st. So if you've knit anything green in the last month and a half, you have a uh, chance to enter that if you get it in by the 31st. So let's talk about the shawl a little bit. I played an epic game of yarn chicken with this shawl. Yarn chicken is not something I normally do. I'm one of those that likes to have leftovers for my cozy memories, leftovers for my scrappy granny squares. I'll put in a picture I took and posted on my stories of my epic game of yarn chicken but I had leftovers of each of this. Uh, I have a skein of the Bad Wolf Girl and a skein of the Cascade Heritage in my stash, so I wasn't that worried about it. I did make some modifications to the pattern. There should be some mesh sections in about the middle of it and then at the end, and there was also supposed to be a seed stitch section, and I chose to just continue the eyelet rows throughout. Um, I did that because I plan to wear this in January and February when it's cold and dark and nasty here in Missouri and this is my remembering that spring is around the corner. Um, I really enjoyed the pattern. It took right at 200 grams of yarn and I knit it on the recommended needle size which I believe was a five, um, a US five. So it was a lot of fun. Um, I did get this pattern off Ravelry, it was free, but if Ravelry is not accessible to you, I'm sure you could message her on Instagram and get a hold of your own copy. So, okay. So yeah, I was really proud of myself for finishing that. Let's move on to something else I said I wasn't going to have much of, which apparently we will now. My brother-in-law asked for a pair of socks for his birthday. His birthday was in February. Epic fail, right? Okay, either way, he's gonna get them. This is Cascade Heritage Prints in color number 84. And it's just a 60 stitch sock on a US size two. Um, he wears a size 12 shoe. So this sock comes with a story. William is in his toddler, in a toddler bed now. And Prior to him being in a toddler bed, I held him every night before he went to sleep and he slept in a pack and play in our room. When we moved into the townhome, we moved him to his own room. And then once he had been in his own room and gotten used to sleeping in there, we moved him to the toddler bed. And we are now doing to where he's not being held when he goes to sleep at night. Um, he's two and a half, it's time. I soaked up every second of those baby snuggles and I would never change that. He's probably my last baby. So I soaked up every bit of baby snuggles I could get. You better believe I would. 
So anyway, so I was falling asleep sitting with him in his bed. I'd get in there, we'd be all snuggly, we'd read our three books, we'd read, sing our three songs, and then I'd just sit there in the dark. And twice, Richard had to come in and wake me up and be like, are you coming downstairs? I'm like, oh, yep, I'm on my way. So I thought, I am missing out on like 30 minutes of primo knitting time. What am I doing? So I took my socks upstairs, my two at a time socks. I can knit two at a time socks in the dark. I've done that in the movie theater, no big deal. The movie theater is not dark. It's dim, but it's not dark. It was a hot mess, you guys. I ended up knitting the first yarn into the second sock and turning it funky and it was all, it was a hot mess. So enter my brother-in-law socks. I went ahead and just cast on a toe and then knit away. And I've gotten another toe started and popped this little serial foot cut out here. I'm about halfway through the foot of the second sock. And I will have enough of this actually to knit my sister a pair to match. Um, they're not super matchy matchy like that, but I love it. So they're going to get a pair. Um, and so, yeah, that's about that for his. Hopefully I'll have both of those done next time I see you guys. And we'll just continue on the sock train. My friend's birthday socks are living in my white clover studios bag. It's an Easter bag. I won last year. Came with this super cute little progress keeper. She is a local bag maker to me and she's got a bag in her shop right now that's got all these cute little fruits and cakes and things on it and I want it so bad. It's probably going to come home with me pretty soon. Nicole, if you are watching, please look away. These are your birthday socks. Um, these are knit out of Knit Picks Static in the Colorway Paradise. The blue little stitch markers down here is where they were the last time you guys saw them. So significant progress. I popped in a couple of Fish Lips Kiss heels. And I am about halfway through the leg. I like to knit my legs so that they come down to where the toe starts and then I'll do the cuff. Um, like I said, these are for my friend's birthday next month. I'll have plenty of time to get them done. And I'm really excited to gift them to her. Um, they're knit on a US one, 2.25 millimeter needle. And as you can see, a hot mess right now, but that's okay. I'll have them done soon and get them all untangled before I put them back in the bag. This was the knitting I took with me on our trip. When Richard and I went to Branson, um, the last time I got, I had talked to you guys, we had just gotten back and I took those with me. Typically when we go places, we take my car because my car um, fits all five of us easily. His car does not. And so he's like, since we don't have the kids, we'll take my car and I'll drive and you can just knit in the car. And I was like, absolutely. If you're offering to let me knit the whole time, sure. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And those got a ton of work, um, while we were driving. Okay. Okay. My next whiff is my Space Clouds test knit for Jovi of Hook Mountain Handmade. There we go. I did end up ripping it out right after I recorded the last podcast. And I have done significant work on it. I'm really glad that I ripped it out. Let me show you the short rows first. I'm so proud of these. I did German short rows. You can barely see them. There's one. Here's the other side. You can barely see my German short rows. Apparently wrap and turns are just not my jam, which is fine. I'm knitting this out of, I love this yarn. The top yarn is gray mist and the bottom yarn is Dancing Meadows, I believe. So I've split for the sleeves and I am one pattern repeat away from reattaching the main color, the gray mist, and continuing on in the body. And I was watching past episodes of the Knitting Annihilator podcast earlier last week, and she was talking about how she likes to knit her sleeves first. 
She doesn't call it sleeve island. She calls it sleeve paradise. And she knits her sleeves first. And then she knits the body of her sweater. And I thought, I'm not sure why I've never thought about doing that before. Because I hate sleeve island. I hate it, hate it, hate it. That's like the worst part of knitting sleeves for me. It's like you get done with the body, you should be done. So I'm going to finish the color block section on here, reattach the main color, do the color block sections on both sleeves, and I'm hoping to have two sleeves done the next time I talk to you guys. Um, I'm already envisioning other sweaters of this. I really want to do, instead of the black, I really want to do the black, excuse me, instead of the gray, doing a black, and then doing just like, crazy pop of color right here. Um, Olivia, my stepdaughter who picked these colors out for me, suggested something like this, where she, I would do black for her and then just this bright neon green. Um, those are her two favorite colors. She loves this shawl, so I have to watch it when she's home because she likes to borrow it. Um, but I may be knitting her one of those. We'll see. So that's flying off the needles, which is good because this is where my temporary bouts of insanity start. So I follow Amanda at Lovely by Lee, and she was talking about the sweater she was going to knit for her husband. And um, she came up with this beautiful pullover sweater. It's broken rib. It's got a really nice top to it. It just, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful sweater. Richard and I have been looking for a sweater for me to knit for him. Because after seven years, he's finally decided he would like a handmade sweater. So I showed him this picture and I was like, look at this sweater that this girl I'm following is designing. And he was like, oh, that's really nice. I like it. I'm like, okay, no big deal. Then she puts out a call for testers. And I'm like, dang it. I'm not going to have enough of the sweater done that I'm currently test knitting to commit to another test knit because I'm not about to sign up for two test knits where I'm going to have to stay up all night to finish them. I don't like to do that. I've done it before. It stinks. You know, I want to give these designers the best I can give them. Um, and then I heard the timeline for this sweater. So Amanda offered an amazing amount of time. She offered 11 and a half weeks. And I jumped. So I signed up to be on her tester Facebook and I was chosen to do one of the sizes. This starts us into stash editions because Richard picked out his yarn and he picked out Mighty Stitch Worsted in Navy. Now, if you have seen past episodes of this podcast, you will know I am not a fan of Mighty Stitch. I knit William a sweater a Diner Roar sweater pattern by Meg Reagan of Bad Wolf Girl Studios um, in the alfalfa color of this yarn. And it split like crazy. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, that's better. But this is the first sweater he's ever asked me to knit him. If he wants a sweater out of Mighty Stitch, he'll get a sweater out of Mighty Stitch. So, and I really like the color. I'm envisioning some natural wood buttons. I'll pop a picture in of the um, sweater that Amanda knit for her husband. Um, and I'm super excited about starting this. So I'm really focusing on my Space Clouds pullover um, for Jovi so that I can get started on this. And it's living in my By the Bay Yarn Co. bag. The yarn is... Um, so I can get started on that pretty soon. Okay, so when you order yarn for a sweater for your significant other, you order yarn for yourself. Second bout of temporary insanity. <coughs> I talked last podcast, or maybe the one before, about how I really wanted a 100% wool sweater. I was not planning on it being non-superwash, but it probably will be. So while watching past episodes of the Knitting Annihilator, she has been knitting a scrapper party. Okay, actually she's knit like three. 
It is this beautiful cardigan. It has got, um, it's like a garter cardigan with these really neat increases. It's by the Drunk Knitter. I'll pop a picture in here and I will um, put a link down below to her Instagram in case you want to look. And so I found this. This is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Sport in Sprinkle Heather. And I just love this purple with these little bits of blue and green and in the sunshine. It's gorgeous. And I know the sport weight and DK can sometimes be swapped out. And a lot of times for most um, sweaters, I have to go down a needle size. So I'm hoping with this that I can get gauge for the scrapper party. Um, this will definitely be a hand wash only because it is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. I thought it was super wash, like the worsted weight is. The sport weight is not super wash. But you know, it's not, I mean, it's a little scratchy, but not much. And I'm super excited to wash and block a swatch and see how soft this gets. Um, so I'm really excited to start that. <sighs> Then we're on <laughs> to more yarn. Um, while we were on his second spring break, so the spring break without the big kids, basically the time Richard was home with me, um, he took me to Hobby Lobby. And when one goes to Hobby Lobby and their yarn is on sale for 30% off, you buy yarn. So this is the Yarn Bee Authentic in the color Iron Soot. It's just a gray tonal. And I picked this up and I bought it because I want to knit the telegram cardigan by Becky Sorensen. Um, I've been knit bit by the sweater bug really bad. Um, and the telegram is a fingerling wave sweater that's all broken rib, has a cable. Um, up the side and then down the bottom of the arm. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that part. I think she has instructions where you can just leave it out. Um, but I bought this yarn to knit that. Now, I know this yarn was causing some hurt feelings, I guess I would say, by um, some indie dyers, um, which I get. That's their livelihood. That's how they make money. I can't afford an indie dyed sweaters quantity of yarn. I just can't. Um, but if I can afford three of these and then an indie dyed skein to go in a color work sweater, I'm still supporting those indie dyers in the way that I can and still getting a beautiful sweater out of it. So um, that's not what this yarn is going for, but there is a dark purple that they have in this. It's a tonal purple and I'm envisioning it with my, um, possibly my Nebula from Bad Wolf Girl Studios and doing a color work yoke with that deep purple. I think it'd just be gorgeous. So, um, you know, you buy the yarn you can afford most of the time for me, that's acrylic but this time I got to buy some of this. So I'm super excited. Again, never knit with 100% wool. Um, excited to see how this locks out. Excited to see how it um, knits up. And I think it'll be a really nice sweater. So the last thing I wanna talk about is the trip to the yarn store that I made in Branson. There's a yarn store on the strip. Well, not on the strip, um, in old downtown, excuse me. And um, I thought it was going to be a yarn store like my local yarn store, the Village Yarnery, where it's they carry yarn from lots of different places. This yarn store only carries their own yarn, which I thought was really neat. Um, you go in and there's, you know, their beautiful wall of yarn and then you can actually see back into their dye studio. And so it was really cool as someone who's interested in dyeing yarn um, to see their setup and see how they did it. And um, see the yarn that was drying. They had yarn that was drying that they needed to cake up. So I went in there with the intention of buying one skein of yarn. I was looking for yarn to knit Richard a sock head hat. Um, 
because he loves the Star Wars hat that I knit for him. He wears it all the time. And so I wanted to knit him a another hat he could wear. So the name of the yarn store is 398. I'll link their Instagram down below. And the collection that they had for this summer is all about Route 66. We live where we live in Southwest Missouri, old Route 66 comes through here. So this is called Blacktop. And I think it's just gonna make a gorgeous sock head hat for him. And then I'll use the leftovers probably as like heels, toes and cuffs and a pair of socks for him. So then he's like, well, who are you buying that for? And I said, well, it's for you. And he was like, well, you can't buy a skein of yarn for me without buying one for yourself. And I said, okay. So I found this, this is called Cadillac Ranch. And I just love all these bright pops of colors, which is funny because I'm not typically someone who enjoys bright colors, but apparently I am turning into one. I was not a Lisa Frank kid, um, you know, back in the 90s. I was not one of those kids, but apparently I am now as an adult. <laughs> um, so like I said, this is Cadillac Ranch. I'm really excited about this. And then I went to their sale wall. And um, while he was bringing up the other two purchases, I found this. And I bought this <laughs> pretty much um, on the name alone. These are going to be Thanksgiving socks. It's called Let's Talk Turkey. Um, it's got some beautiful browns, that gorgeous pumpkin. And down here, some beautiful, like, plummy, cranberry colors. I'm just so excited for these. These are going to be socks, probably for me and for mom. Um, and then while he was checking out, he grabbed this because he said I needed minis for my blanket. He picked this one out. I absolutely loved it. Uh, there weren't names on this color. And then last but not least, <laughs> he picked me out this, which is a pin for my bag. So this will go on the bag that I'm getting ready to start his sweater in. So I got a ton of yarn on our trip. And, um, you know, for someone who was supposed to be working through stash this year, uh, that's obviously not going according to plan, but that's okay. We had a good time and I don't, I don't buy stuff like that, like yarn like that. Um, and he wanted to buy it for me. So I let him, um, so that's pretty much it for stash additions, for whips, for finished objects. So if you're just here for the knitting, I'll see you later. Um, hopefully I'll see you guys in two weeks and, um, we're going to move on to life update. Um, spring break was really good. Um, the first half of the week was just me, Jane and William. We just hung out around the house, did some cleaning, chilled out. The second half of the week, um, we, Sissy was here. So we had, uh, we went bowling. We, we pulled their beds down. We'll bring their mattresses down into the living room and they get to do a sleepover. So um, typically one of us sleeps down here with them because there's a lot of highway noise um, and it wakes them up and sometimes will scare Jade. So one of us sleeps down here with them. Um, poor Richard drew the short straw. They voted for him to stay down here. So I got to go upstairs and sleep in our bed and watch past episodes of The Knitting Annihilator because I've been binge watching her channel and um, knit in bed. It was glorious. I felt so bad for him. Um, so we did that and just kind of spent a ton of time together as a family. It was really great. Um, and then they went back to school and he went back to work. And then he surprised me with the last half of last week off. So he was home with me Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, which was a lot of fun. We got caught up on most of our Marvel movies. We've been watching the Marvel movies in timeline order. And the only one we have left is Ant-Man and the Wasp. I do know that Affinity Wars and Endgame are there. I do not like to watch those. I've seen them once. I know what happens. They make me cry. I'm not one of those girls that enjoys movies that make me cry. I purposefully do not watch the last three Harry Potters for that reason. Um, I am just one of those people. I'm not into 
crying because of movies. Um, Richard's been trying to get me to watch the Titanic. I have never seen the Titanic because I know what happens at the end and it's going to make me cry. He spent all break trying to get me to watch it. I probably am going to give in and rent it for him and watch it with him just to say I've done it and I will never watch it again. Um, I don't like the idea of falling in love with a character who I know is going to die. It's the same thing with Grey's Anatomy. They killed off my favorite character and I quit watching it. <laughs> um, I do that with a lot of shows. They don't do what I like. You're done. See you later. So, um, then this last weekend has been kind of rough. Uh, we had a family member pass away. He, um, was ill and not doing well. So it wasn't that big of a shock. Um, but it's been hard, um, for my family, my uncle, um, his plane probably just landed. Um, he's from Alaska, so he's here. Um, even though we're sad why he's here, we're excited to have him here. He's going to stay and help kind of sort things out, um, and everything. And, um, other than that, that's pretty much all we've done. I've just kind of been trying to be close to my phone, close to home. So if anyone needs me, I can go do what needs to be done. Um, so hopefully I will get a lot of knitting done in the last, in the next two weeks. His funeral should be Friday. Um. And so I just am envisioning a lot of time with my grandma and a lot of um, family togetherness in the next week or two. So we'll see how much knitting I can get done in that time. I hope that you all are well and healthy and safe. And I will see you guys in two weeks. Bye. Ooh.